G'day guys. Um, had a kid come to me with this question. Apparently he's flummoxed by it. Um, you know who you are if you're watching this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain how I would go about answering this problem and uh, hopefully my explanation helps you. So what I'm going to do is we've got the question using first principles find the derivative of f of x equals 1 over x squared. Now the first principles definition of a derivative is like the limiting chord process which states that if we want to find a derivative of something f prime of x we take the limit as this variable we have h approaches 0 of the function at x plus h minus the function at x all divided by h. So there's our definition of a derivative using the limiting chord process or first principles. So to start with what we're going to do is we're going to enter in our function in here. Now for those of you who are struggling what, with what to enter in, we have f of x is equal to this. So f of, wow that was bad, f of x plus h is going to be equal to 1 over x plus h all squared. So that's our f of x plus h. We've already got our f of x. What we can do is we can go about entering them into our definition of a derivative. So this is going to be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, which is this thing, 1 divided by x plus h all squared minus the function at x which is just 1 over x squared all divided by h. Cool. Now, so what we're going to do here is we've got to basically once we've got to this point we just have to use some algebra to get to the end and find out what our derivative is. So we're going to say this is equal to the limit as h approaches 0. So basically the rest of this video is going to be me going through the algebra required to solve this problem of you can't subtract fractions with different bases that's basically a 12 year old could teach you that so you know if you're stuck on that maybe you need to go back and have a revision of that so what we'd have to do is we have to make the bases the same. The way that we, the stock standard way of making the bases the same is we just multiply the bases together. So for the numerator of this fraction here, we're going to have the bases multiplied together or x squared times x plus h squared. Okay, and on the top, we had to times x plus h by x squared, so we're going to times 1 by x squared. We had to times x squared by x plus h squared, so we're going to times x 1 by x plus h squared. And then all of this is over h. Cool, so it's a fairly scary looking function at the moment, but not to worry, we'll get to the bottom of it. So this is also going to be the limit of. Now, just for those of you who don't fully, aren't fully comfortable with those binomial expansions, x plus h all squared, because I was just going to go straight into doing it, but I'll hold myself back. This is going to be equal to x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Alright, so 
that's what the binomial expansion of that is. So you should be able to go straight from there to there. That's not that's not a big deal. Okay, so we're going to say that this, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to do the operation that we have in the numerator of the numerator. So this is the limit of x plus h. That becomes a bit of a, sorry. The limit as h approaches 0. That becomes a bit of a trek to do every time. And this is of x squared minus, now it's minus all of this. So the x squareds will cancel. Or, yeah, for, for those of you who won't fully comprehend what I'm doing, I'll just do it in full. This is going to be minus that, so it's x squared minus x squared minus 2xh minus h squared all over x squared x plus h all squared all over h. Close the bracket. Now, what happens now is we've got x squared minus x squared. Cool. Get rid of it. So that's made our lives somewhat easier. So what we can do now is we can write this is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of. Now, what I'm going to do, just to save time, I'm going to factorize the numerator up here, the 2xh minus h squared. I'm going to factorize it by h. And then I'm also going to multiply out this bracket. So what happens here is this x plus h all squared is this. So it's going to be x squared times this. So that's going to be x to the power of 4 times, oh sorry, not times, plus x squared times 2xh or 2x cubed h plus x squared h squared. And all of that is over h. Now, I'll go to the next line. Well, we can, we can rewrite this. It's a pain in the ass, but I'll do it. Um, this is equal to the limit as h approaches 0. Of h outside of negative negative 2x minus h all divided by x to the 4 plus 2x cubed h plus x squared h squared. Now, dividing by a number is like multiplying by its reciprocal. So what we can do is we can times this by 1 over h. Okay. And the reason I rewrote it is so you could see what the method is to cancel out the h's. Notice how there's a h on the top and there's a h on the bottom. So they can go. So what we're left with. Now we're approaching the business end of this thing. As h approaches 0 of negative 2x minus h divided by x to the 4 plus 2x cubed h plus x squared h squared. Close the bracket. Now, what we do is we take we actually do the limit as h approaches 0. So we we write, we tell, if this is an exam question, we have to actually tell the examiner that this is going to approach 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to write that. We say as h approaches 0, comma, this function f prime of x 
is going to equal. So what we do is we take our business end one and we go, well, what's happening here? As H approaches zero, well, that's gonna, this is gonna equal zero. 2x cubed times zero, doesn't matter what x is, if it's times zero, that's gonna equal zero. x squared h squared is also gonna equal zero. So as this approaches zero, that's going to go be zero, that's going to be zero, and that's going to be zero. So, what happens here is we're left with negative 2x over x to the 4. Which, if you simplify that, it's not a very complicated simplification, the x and the x to the 4, will can't, the x at the top will cancel out. And the 4 will be replaced by a 3. That's just simple index laws. So f of x would then equal negative 2 divided by x cubed. So that's how you would use first principles to find the derivative of f of x equaling 1 on x squared. I hope it's helpful. It's testing more so your knowledge of algebra rather than your knowledge of the first principles concept, but, you know, you win some, you lose some.